Um, so yesterday it became apparent that the residents in West Belfast had put up a legal challenge against Nicola Mallon um, to stop the building of Casement Park. Now that wasn't because of, of the financial reasons or anything else that was to do with blocking a few from their houses and what have you. Um, regardless of that, they lost. And we then had Deirdre Hargay come straight on to the screens all over the place going, um, we will get this built and we need to move at pace. Now, as part of New, new Decade, New Approach brought to us by the DUP and the Ulster Unionist Party, Appendix 1 in the Programme for Government in Section 14, there's a, bit, a, a small statement and that was used by the judge in his ruling yesterday. The plan to complete both the re regional and sub-regional sports stadia programme. So regardless of the legal challenge that was put forward by the West Belfast residents, the judge said, it's a new take a new approach. This has to be done. This has to be built. It will be. So as John stated earlier, the original cost of Casement Park was estimated at £77.5 million. Pounds. The executive pledged £62 million pounds of that and the GAA were supposed to give 15. The estimated cost now is £140 million. Pounds. And yesterday, the Ulster GAA Head of Operations, Stephen McGeehan, is quoted as saying, we've been given a commitment that the budget shortfall will be met by the executive whenever that is in place. This is presumably based on what Deirdre Hargay believed. And that's when the executive originally agreed to the project, it was committing itself to pay whatever it cost, regardless of the cost increase. McGeehan also stated, we've been of the view that the 15 million we contributed seven or eight years ago was our maximum contribution to the project. No more cash from GAA. At the same time, funding for football substadia is held up. So football and rugby might well demand a quality of expenditure on their sports if the GAA is handed this massive funding increase. Doubtful if they'll get it. The GAA had a surplus of £11.5 million in 2021. The legal costs that they've just been through over the last seven or eight years cost £11 million. That's, that's these four million out of the 15 that they've contributed, they're not going to give any more to that. Um, as we all know, the GA is the richest sporting body in, in Northern Ireland. And uh, in 2019, their gate receipts came to 73.8 million euros, which is 62.9 million pounds. They also made 17.4 million in commercial income, but they will only give 15 million pounds they've given it, they're not going to give any more. Windsor Park, which is the home of Linfield, Northern Ireland Football Club, or Northern Ireland International Football Team, received 28.75 million, and the Kingspan, which is Ulster Rugby, they received 14.7 million. That was 10 years ago. As we also know, Casement Park is a very controversial place, um, and that is because of what happened on the 19th of March 1988 when Corporal Derek Wood and Corporal David House were dragged from the car after stumbling upon an IRA terrorist funeral. And they were badly beaten and they were shot live on our TV screens around the world. The GAA, for those who maybe don't know, are in line with Sinn Féin IRA here where they celebrate terrorists, they celebrate their deeds, they commemorate terrorists that committed these atrocities and here they are wanting to build a ground where, where IRA terrorists killed two serving soldiers. There's also the flip side of this where we have Naomi Long, um, the, the Alliance Party, SDLP, Colin Eastwood, I nearly forgot his name, and Sinn Féin IRA bashing on at us about the cost of living crisis etc etc. Here they are willing to spend just under £140 million pounds on a sporting ground that, as Michelle O'Neill put yesterday, for Ulster Gales. I'm not an Ulster Gale. How many people in our community are Ulster Gales? How many people in our community support this sport? We also have the Expensive Irish Language Act on top of that. We can't afford this. 
if they want to fix the cost of living crisis, they'll stop these projects and stop them now. Um, Lorna, what do I add to that? You know, um, that was very, very well delivered, I have to say. And I've just seen a comment there from Simon um, Quarry. You know, this is exactly the way things are. Lorna, for the first time in history, the most dangerous thing in Northern Ireland is an educated working class loyalist. And, you know, well, we are what we are because that we care. Do you know, Simon, and Simon is a, a good lad too. He writes, um, you know, with, with great, um, I'm going to say, capability. So, yeah, and, you know, an army of people must be put together with weapons of words. And that's what we are. We are the that army in its embryonic form. I'm just looking for a picture here that I want to superimpose on top of our screen. And I'm just going to, this is on the casement park and this is on the another day, another discrimination. And what Lorna was just talking about there, and it was delivered, you know, finally, let's just say, is that, you know, there's a huge disparity in terms of what it is that comes into the unionist Kirk community versus what it is that goes into the, the nationalist and Republican community. And, you know, and, and, and that is that is the appeasement process, um, you know, which that's the best way to describe how the appeasement process works, is that, that we, and this is Jimmy Bryson's words, by the way, that we are always expected to give and they are always expected to get. So this was Caseman Park. Um, you know, anybody can guess if put in the live chat uh, what, what significance this picture has with reference to Casement Park. Um, well, anyway, I'm just going to go on. I'm just going to speak about it. Um, this was the Bobby Story funeral. This was inside Casement Park. This wasn't outside Casement Park. Did you know that the Bobby Story funeral actually left from inside Casement Park as it came out and it marched its way uh, up the Anderson's Town Road then from Casement Park? Now, if you understand who Bobby Story was, uh, you know, Mary Lou MacDonald, what did she say? She says that we're here to celebrate the life of our leader. And I thought Mary Lou MacDonald was the Sinn Féin leader. Uh, you know, Bobby Story most certainly wasn't the, the leader of Sinn Féin. So who was Bobby Story the leader of, according to Mary Lou MacDonald's own words? Well, it transpires that Bobby Story was the leader of the IRA Army Council at that point, uh, whenever he died. So Mary Lou MacDonald, I'll quote her words yet again, is that we're here to celebrate the life of our leader. And then ask yourself a question, if they have such control over Casement Park that they can you know, walk, march that IRA funeral from, in times of COVID, whenever people had to sit in their houses and watch their nearest and their dearest getting buried, and whenever every single person uh, in this country had to abide by the restrictions that Sinn Féin were party to actually make him. Whenever everyone else had to abide by the rules where they brought thousands of people out into Belfast to celebrate, in the words of Mary Lou MacDonald, the life of their leader. So what you're seeing here is that, and whenever we look at the PSNI and how that it was that the PSNI actually colluded with the organisers of that funeral to ensure that there was a consistent messaging that was actually put forward for and on behalf of the organizers of the uh, funeral and also from the PSNI. So the PSNI conspired with terrorists to give Bobby Story, I wait for it, a British state funeral. Now, not even the Queen's husband, and we celebrate the uh, jubilee of the Queen here uh, in the coming days, but not even the Queen's husband, not even the head of the state got a, a state funeral, but Bobby Story was afforded a British state funeral. Remember that. That is fact, people. That isn't fabrication. That is absolute fact. And let's just show you this funeral coming out of Casement Park. So there we go. That's Casement Park. You see them marching out of the gates here. There's the, if you look behind that hearse and you look up in the, the sky there, you see the, you know, the, the, the lights, the floodlights, which light up the field of Casement Park. You know, how come that the IRA were able to organise the, 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 the state funeral for the leader of the IRA Army Council from inside that GAA ground? Now, that's a real question. That's a question that our unionist politicians need to answer. Should they? Should they? 
Well, they've already agreed 62 and a half million of that money. But should they not actually say that should this money be spent towards enhancing Casement Park over and above anything that was given to, say, Windsor Park? Should any, any funding over and above what Windsor Park got be given to these people? Well, that means that you and I and every single British unionist in this country have effectively been discriminated against. We are second class citizens. We don't matter. There's a huge disparity of funding. But then ask yourself a question, why is that money continuously given to them? Why are, do they continuously get every single thing that they want? And yet we are expected to be, you know, subjected to being separated from the United Kingdom, being subjected to having a border in the North Channel, being subjected to having our democracy removed with reference to the Brexit referendum. Why is it that we have been treated so abysmally and yet these people seemingly they get every single thing that they want. One more picture and then what we're going to do is that we're going to um, actually move on. And this is just another picture that I want to show. So there you go. You've seen them in Casement Park. You see them coming out of Casement Park. And now we're going to tell you why that it was that they got what they wanted. So have a look at this man. Put this man in your in your memory bank. A guy called Ryan Feeney. And it says here that he's set to leave his post within the PSNI. So former GAA official Ryan Feeney set to quit his post within the, in the PSNI. Now let's go on to read and understand who Ryan Feeney was and what Ryan Feeney was at the time of the Bob B. Story funeral. So it says here in the Irish News on the 17th of September 2021, so it says former senior GA official Ren Feeney is set to leave his job as head of the PSNI press office. Oh, press office. Mr Feeney, 41, who had served with the role as director of strategic communications for the PSNI. So he was set to leave his job as head of the PSNI's press office, head of communications, director, it says here at the bottom, of strategic communications. Then we remember, Lorna, then we remember... You couldn't make this up that the, I call him the rear admiral, I um, can't remember his name, Matt Parr was his name. He was sent here to do an inquiry into the circumstances surrounding Bobby Story's funeral. And Matt Parr had found that the PSNI had actually um, conspired and Sam McBride from the newsletter had, had actually divulged this too, that the PSNI had conspired with the organisers of Bobby Story's funeral to provide a consistent message and a consistent message in. Now look, here we had a GAA official, Ryan Feeney, who was Director of Strategic Communications. So the question is, who was it that conspired with the organisers of Bobby Story's funeral to provide a consistent message in? And he conspired with the IRA terrorists to provide a consistent message um, to bluff the people of Northern Ireland with reference to the state funeral that was awarded to Bobby Story whenever every single citizen, Catholic, Protestant, nationalist or other in this country, whenever they couldn't bury their loved ones, you really couldn't make this up. And the Justice Minister, the Justice Minister, she says that there was nothing to see here, move on, that the, the inquiry had been held and it's over and it's done with and everybody's got to move on. You see, this is the corruption that we are living with and living in. And our politicians, namely the DUP, the UUP, the people in the assembly with the exceptions again of Jim Allister. And now it appears Alex Easton because he decided that he couldn't be part of that shenanigans ever again. You know, with the exceptions of those few and Jim Wells previously. Well, they're the only people. Um, that has the guts to stand up to these people. So go ahead, go ahead Lorna, uh, your last comment on, on the GAA, the terrorist loving uh, GAA that are getting a huge amount of funding that I've just shown um, that, that uh, well, who actually runs Casement Park? And that is a real question. Who is that funding going to benefit? Over to you, Lorna. 
I think the other thing we have to look at is um, who is in charge of all the legal side of it, um, receiving money, and the builders themselves. Who are the builders attached to? Um, who runs them? Who's in charge of them? Um, uh, just like the Bobby Story funeral, when the when the report came out, um, the PS and I had stated somewhere along the line that they had given it over to a security firm. Who ran the security firm? PS and I apparently didn't know. How could they not know? They were the ones dealing with them. But of course, we have Jerry Kelly sitting in the policing board. So what else do we expect? This can't keep going on. And and another thing about this is as well, we need our community to start reading up in history. I know it's horrible. I know it's bloody. It's it's gruesome. But if we don't understand the history and what happened and what was done against our community and our soldiers, our veterans, and we haven't got a leg to stand on. We can't fight this because they will win every time. And I remember Jeffrey Donaldson went to meet the chief constable, and this is fact, absolute <laughs> fact, um, as a result of the the Bobby story for now. And I can remember them coming out, and you know we've had a a robust conversation or whatever. You know, Arlene Foster was calling for um, Simon Barron to go over the shenanigans. And look, there you go again. There's another example of how that the DUP say one thing and then what they do is they roll over, they flip-flop, and they never mean what they say. They always uh, walk away. And how could they have walked away under such circumstances? You know, I mean, look, look you need to nip things in the bud. And this is the reason why these people continue to do what they do is because it has never, ever, ever been nipped in the bud. And they must be laughing at unionism and saying... These people are so easy. You know, having seen Jeffrey Donaldson in those stages before the uh, protocol, uh, you know, at the protocol rally stages, when they were saying, you know, the protocol has to go, the democratic rights have to be respected, we will not begin in Stormont. The minute that they stood in that great hall in Stormont, what did he say? We have to deal with the issues around the protocol. Now, remember I says, if the car has to go and it's giving you problems, it doesn't mean that you're going to fix the car up. But that's what Jeffrey Donaldson effectively is saying. And that's going to be breaking it down so that everybody can understand exactly um, what it is that Jeffrey Donaldson is saying.